Ask your fellow NLP fans whether they've ever experienced something they cannot explain, and you'd be surprised how often you hear the answer, yes. The following story is just one of such accounts, written by a member of our own fandom, from his own experiences. It's a tale that fares from the sides of the main line from Bristol to Devon, one that touches upon a tragic railway accident and its legend, and a strange twist of familial fate. Mares, gentle colts, and those betwixt, this is Silver Gear's story. The exact date of the event I cannot really recall, but I do know it was a Wednesday, to the best of my knowledge. The day was grey and miserable, typical of a British midsummer, as 2016 was teaching us. It was around 9 o'clock when I got up, everyone in the house being fast asleep as it was somewhere in the school holidays, so I was the only one around at the time. I stretched and walked to the bathroom, its one frosted glass window providing a hazed view of the various greens that stood on the opposite side of the railway. I had washed, cleaned myself up, and was considering the day ahead when I heard the approach of a train, this one headed by a steam locomotive. Steam excursions were rather common along there at this time of year, particularly as it's a clear run into Devon and Cornwall from London and Bristol as they regularly host trains like the Torbay and Southwest leg of the Cathedral's Expresses. This one hissed and roared by from my right to my left, seeming as if it had just run down from Plax Borton on the final stretch towards Bristol. It was mostly what we call shut up, meaning the throttle on the engine is open just a crack to let it roll freely without wasting too much steam, and so made very little noise as far as an engine is concerned. A cloud of smoke and steam was visible against the vegetation on the far bank of the cutting, rolling and curling in that fluid movement that hot gases usually do, giving a clear outline as it rose from the right and moved to the left, in close pursuit of the train it had erupted from. As the noise of the trailing coaches disappeared into the usual quiet of the village, I finished up momentarily and returned to my room to fetch my phone. Being an avid railway enthusiast, or train spotter if one is being unkind, I took an interest in the railway traffic that passed by my home. Steam locomotives and their famous special trains in particular, what was pulling the train, where it had come from, and where it was going. Maybe even if it was coming back later that evening. Although in hindsight, I should have clocked the fact that trains heading into Bristol in the morning usually don't make the return trip along the Bristol and Exeter line, if making a return leg at all. Something else I noticed only upon reflection is that the train made no whistle as it steamed under Monarch's Way overbridge, a point where some stood to watch passing trains, often getting a toot on the horn or a whistle from the drivers with away from their cab. Perhaps no one had been standing on the bridge to watch the special pass? It was only when I looked at the year's rail tour information and scrolled to the day's expected movements and specials the thing started to really not make sense. The trouble lay in what I had seen, or failed to see on that webpage. There were only two steam movements listed for that Wednesday. The Jacobite, which was all the way on the Fort William to Maelig line in the Scottish Highlands, and a steam working from London up north. There were no steam trains due in the Bristol area that day, or even for a few days if I recall. This was rather odd, but not unusual, as maybe there might have been a mistake on the webpage. Thinking that might be the case, I went straight to the working timetable for clarification. If there were any solid remarks or unusual movements, it would be there. Using the nearest two timetabling points as a reference, namely Nailsea and Blackwell Station and Parson Street Junction, I looked in the confidence that I would find something there regarding a steam special, but still turned up empty. Beginning to grow a little bit anxious, I then checked for any traffic that might have passed between these two points in the past 10 minutes, but again found nothing in either direction. This didn't make much sense, particularly as this was, in my mind, an ironclad form. A train at full pelt takes about 7 minutes to pass between these two points minimum, and nothing had been by in the past 20 to 30 minutes. I 
I then ventured to other sources for the timetable, but all showed the exact same as before, much to my perplexation. As a last resort, I went to check the circuits. To the uninitiated, I'm referring to a public information system which reflects real-time positions of trains across most of the UK's railway network, the stretch of line outside my house included. I recall finding the stopper train that had just left Parson Street heading down towards Weston and onto Taunton, as well as another train, this time an express waiting on the Western Loop to depart for Bristol. Nothing to be found within 30 minutes, at least in either direction, since this mysterious train made its appearance. There was nowhere for a train to venture away from the line between Parson Street Junction and Wall Junction being about 5 and 10 minutes away from my location, respectively. I was seriously beginning to question my senses here, checking my timings, maps, sources, timetables, anything that might give some sort of indication that there was some rational explanation as to what I saw, simply because what I had seen and heard was nigh impossible. It begged the question of how what I thought to be a train moving roughly 50 to 60 miles an hour managed to clear this stretch of track so quickly without so much as a single report as to its passing. I was aware of some (laughs) nonsense story about an accident that took place on the line through the village many years ago and how a spectre still haunts the tracks at night. Your typical yarns for my grandparents to scare their young. Perhaps I was mistaken with the steam I had seen that had somehow risen from the farm track on the far side. But this was also impossible, or at least highly improbable, simply on the grounds of the speed of which the din had passed, the noise that had accompanied it, and how sure I was that that steam rose from the cutting itself covering the green vegetation within as it reached into the grey skies. This is where the story should have ended. I had decided not to dwell on what I had experienced out of the simple fact that it did not make sense, was simply impossible due to the frank nature of timetable information and the lack of forthcoming reports of some mystery train riding into Bristol, as ridiculous as that sounds as well as the simpler truth that it wasn't really going to have any bearing on my life going forward, despite its inexplicable nature. Again, this is where the story should have ended. Unfortunately, for me, that's not really the case. I later found information on the supposed accident, references to the old Board of Trade report that would have come with it after an investigation into what had occurred that day. The 27th of July, 1876, an express passenger train named the Flying Dutchman derailed roughly under Monarch's Way Bridge at an estimated 50 miles per hour. The crew of the locomotive were killed, one a few hours after the fact from his injuries, the other instantly being crushed. Their names were William Dunscombe, the driver, and A. James Randall, his fireman. In conjunction to this, my mother was doing research into our family history, finding that a good part of it originally resided in Bristol and Long Ashton itself, much to our pleasant surprise. I took an interest and assisted where I could at her request. It was when I looked into the family tree that I saw something that actually chilled me to the bone, recalling the scene that I had witnessed earlier that year. In my mind, it read, Something like this. Randall J. Death, 1876. As to what I experienced, I simply do not know. Nor can I explain it. It could not have been a train, that much I know for sure, but as for what it was, well, who can say? It may dismay some that I refuse to believe superstition. While I enjoy the odd fiction or mystery, I do not entertain the ideas of the spiritual or the supernatural, preferring reliance on keen observation and measurement to define the world. While my belief still holds true to this day, never has anything shaken it like my experience 
on that grey Wednesday morning. Oh boy, this one was technical. The reconstruction of the view through the window was based on Silver's own sketch. Even the audio was sampled by Silver based on what he himself remembered. From his recollections, we believe the event most likely occurred on Wednesday the 20th of July 2016. If anyone has their own similar experiences, or even theories regarding what Silver encountered that day, be sure to let us know, in the comment section or in the ECS Discord server. A big thank you to Silver for giving us so much information in regards to this case. Thank you all for watching, and happy heartwarming.